This video is sponsored by Decal Works, offering 10% off all graphics to retail customers. Use the promo code RX10 at decalmx.com to receive 10% off your graphics. Hey, welcome everybody to racerxonline.com. I am Chris Kiefer and we are here at Cahia Creek Motocross Park to decide a dispute that has been long overdue. 350 versus 450. We brought 2023 KTM 350 SXF as well as 450 SXF. But the kicker here is they're just not stock. I raced and tested both of these bikes and wanted to see what both of these needed. So we decided we need a little bit of a different offset. We have suspension, we have an ECU, we have handlebars, and of course we have Dunlop MX-33 and 34 tires mounted on these things. So although they might have slightly different changes on each, both of them have changes that I think each bike needs. Now the kicker here is we're going to get a few guys on the track, get some lap times. I'm not going to tell them their lap times on each bike and then we're going to decide which one is better, 350 or a 450. The great debate is what we're here for today. So stay tuned going to have a lot of fun. We're going to break it all down. Big guys to small guys. Which bike is better? 350 cc's of fury or 450? So stay tuned. Guys, we wrapped it up here at Cahia Creek MX Park 350 versus 450. So before we get into Eddie's pick and what actually Eddie did for times, because we put lap times on everybody here, um, I'm going to give you a little snippet of what we did on each bike and the reasons why some things are different than others. So first things first, when I get a KTM 350 or 450, they come a little bit rich. They're a little bit lethargic feeling, a little bit disconnected to the throttle. So getting the ECU tuned up is really important. Now KTM has locked all of their stock boxes so you can't get into them. I've heard one aftermarket company has found a way, but they're not quite there yet, so we'll wait on that. But nonetheless, Chad at XPR does wonderful work with Vortex ECU mapping. I've worked with them the past few years on KTM mapping, Yamaha mapping, as well as some Honda stuff. So I know how good he can map a Vortex for the KTM. So we put a Vortex tuned, um, mapped, ECU on a 350 as well as a 450 mapped to T4 and also ETS MX18. So you can put 10 different style maps within these Vortex ECUs. So I wanted to feel the difference between fuels. So we are on a map for ETS racing fuel here right now. And the next step for me was also just mating it with an FMF 4.1 muffler. Out of all the mufflers I have tested, I'm going to swallow this right now and get ready and tell you guys because a lot of people are going to be mad at me. FMF has done the homework with the KTM group, the R&D group, because they work hand in hand closely. When you first buy a KTM, the only way you can get an FMF muffler is through your KTM dealership. So for me, these FMF mufflers are mated perfectly for the ECU and the bike, so that's why they're on there. So I'm recommending if you guys are getting a muffler for your bike, I feel like I get the most out of the KTMs with these mufflers. Now, the next thing for me, I didn't really want to screw with the engine that much. These things are really good with just an ECU and some fuel. So the next step was trying to get them to calm down. With KTM's new chassis, it is a little bit rigid. They're a little bit in, a um, little bit unstable off throttle coming in the corner. So getting the right offset for me is important. Um, besides doing engine mounts, I decided to leave those stock. We decided to go with X-Trig 24, 22 or 24 offset or a 23.5 ride engineering offset. So again, different triple clamp companies, similar feel on both for me. One is a little bit more rigid than the other. Uh, the X-Trig for me is a little bit more um, harsh on slap down landings and the ride 
engineering clamps have a little bit more comfort, but nonetheless, they calm the bike down and give the bike less vibration because these KTMs do vibrate more than the Japanese bikes. So we have that. And then here's where it gets interesting. A lot of you guys buy KTMs and I'm going to a spring fork right away. That's it. I'm, I can't deal with the air fork. I'm guilty of it as well. I do that same thing. I'm like, I, I can't deal with it. I need to get rid of the air fork. I'm going to a 6500 WP drop-in or a cone valve. So what we did is we left the 450 stock. We messed with some clickers. I went out and tested some stuff, got a baseline setting for the stock stuff, and then uh, felt like it was comfortable enough for us to go test. I set the sag for me, 175 pounds. Again, big guy, medium guy, a little bit bigger than big. So we have a mixture of uh, test riders here today, but baseline um, sag setting was for me. That's what we do in the production world when we do test motorcycles, get a middle ground for sag. Um, so that's what we did on both bikes, but nonetheless, the 450 has a stock setting with a 104 uh, millimeter sag reading for me. And then with this, um, WP also with REP suspension, Mark does great work over there. We decided to go full bore with the 350, cone valve fork with a track shock, all set up for my weight and my ability. And then we left it um, just like that for these guys. Dropped the fork down to about a flush to three millimeter height, whatever you guys prefer. If you want it to corner a little bit better, you can raise that fork up. But just to give you an idea of the differences uh, between each bike and if that makes a difference for these riders here. You're looking at the founders of the Church of 350. So I love a 350. We have talked to Jace on his show, Gypsy Tales, about 350, how much we wish more manufacturers would make the that size CC motorcycle because it is a perfect blend of power, chassis performance, and just fun factor. So, not to get all holy on you guys about 350, but we're going to discuss it. Jace, how you doing? Good, mate. Thanks for having me out here. Eh? It's a bit of an honor to be on key for testing. I really try hard to be a tenth as good at you as testing. You know? Actually, so just so you guys know, before we started rolling this tape here, we started talking about handlebars and we do pro taper bars just because they have a lot of dampening they control some of that vibration that the ktm has i'm back onto a zrt throttle uh, aluminum tube so taking those lock-ons off uh comfort but mr gypsy here knew exactly he's like i feel like one bike has wider bars than the other and i'm like hmm very interesting and he was right as the 350 is a measurement of 804 millimeters and the old 450 here has 800 so the man can feel four millimeters. God, you can't really say that to a lot of people. So that is impressive. So uh, it really threw me off too, to be honest. Really? Yeah. It, it's it feels more than it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when I tell you guys to cut your bars from 811 to 804, that's a lot. And you look at it to cut, it looks like nothing, but it feels a lot on the bike. So good job. Thanks, mate. All right. So what do you think you were faster on? 350 or 450? Uh, probably the 350, a little bit. Uh, actually, bike wise, I'll just say I liked both of them today, like quite a lot. And I, I really did enjoy the, the 450. I think I was faster on the 350 because I had a bit more front end feeling. And I think that like the narrow bars with the air fork, I always felt like, especially here, there's a lot of like downhill, like the bike's going away from mm -hmm. you. And I felt like the, the front end was always going away from me a little bit more on the 450, like towards the end of the turn, I was like chasing the front end. Okay. Whereas the three, the 350, I felt like I was just kind of like in the right spot of the bike, like my position, the bike position and in the turn. So I feel like I was a little bit faster on the 350, but I will say I liked the 450 more than I thought I would. And I feel like if I knew a lap time and I was chasing a lap time, I could probably get the lap time. But he is right. He was faster on a 350. So if we can put the time here below, 150 versus a 151.2. So 1.2 seconds faster on the 350. Eddie smoked me. So that's right. I didn't think about that. Smoked me, Eddie. <laughs> a race within a race here. So now the next question, what would you want to load up and take home? 350. 350. <laughs> yeah. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but just for you, what you're doing, you're out here in Southern California for a while, riding, you've, you've seen our tracks now. Small chop, hard pack, maybe some loam in the morning. 350 is the bike for you. Yeah, I think just that, the the feeling, that, that whole like chasing the bike through the turns, like 
I don't like that on a 450. You know, like you, you add in the extra power. Like uh, I think people say you can be lazier on 450s, but I feel like you've got to be pretty precise on your shifts, especially on the KTMs, because if you start over revving the bikes, like the chassis, that's, that's when it really up. starts yeah. to like get wild. So I think that I would take home the 350. Uh, I really like this suspension from Mark at REP. Um, it's actually a long time friend of mine. First yep. time I've ever rode his suspension. Okay. So I was wow. very stoked on that. Um, so yeah, set up for me, obviously. But, but we're the same weight, yeah. just different speed. Yep. Um, so, so, so far, not too harsh for you. It's a little firmer feeling, obviously. Yeah, it, it w was a bit harsh, but I've been riding a trail bike yeah. for, the, for the little bit. So I'm a little bit jacked up at the moment. Um, but yeah, I felt really comfortable on this bike. I definitely feel like that the front end feeling is really gaunt with these forks in particular like the um, and, and no the... like the just the front end traction okay. like I, it just feels planted and yep. it feels like i'm on top of the bike at the right time where it feels like on the 450 it sort of goes away from me and then i've got to yep. catch up you know um but yeah power wise i know i can do i've been doing a lot of 20 minute motos so i know i can do my 20 on this thing i feel like i got a good feeling a good like pacing that brings um, me to a point so you've been riding your bike yeah um now you're on this ecu fuel and a muffler how big of a difference that is from your bike oh it's crazy so i've been riding the xcf 350 yep. um and i actually really really like it six speed gearbox very mellow power it feels like a oh it is a trail bike essentially yep. but it, it has like that really you can just crack the throttle it feels you were telling not me you risky. can actually ride it. Yeah, yeah. Right. I feel like I'm the boss of that bike. Right. That bike's not the boss of me. You start getting into this thing with the pipe, the good fuel, the ignition, uh, and it's way more like racy, yeah. you know? So I honestly feel like if I could have this for a start and then a button where it went back to the XCF, yeah. like that's probably the bike that I want to race and do like 20 minute, like long motos on, you know? So the beauty of the Vortex ECU, you can use your stock map switch and go from, you know, one map to the other there is a softer map and a harder hitting map uh eddie he wanted the harder hitting map i went back and forth i like the harder hitting map on the 350 and the and the smoother map on the 450 but it is nice that feature is there um what we call what what jace is talking about that feeling in the corner is contact patch and the 350 does have a little bit more contact mm. feel to the ground when you ride it even though the suspension itself seems to hold up a little bit more but it's amazing how much an ECU can change a motorcycle. It's very lively, um, very peppy, but not so much where you're going to upset your corners. It just, it makes the bike feel fun for me. And that's why I think I like riding so much because it, it makes me want to ride harder. You know? Yeah. And this thing's very versatile as well. Like the first little bit, I mean, this was my first time ever riding here too. So I had to learn like two new bikes plus the, yeah. the track. Um, but I first went out and I was like second, third, shifting a lot more. And then I started just third more kind of right. kind of everywhere. Uh, but I definitely feel, you know, you got the you got the triple, and then you go left, uh, right, left. Yep. That shop there is like a really. I'd say that there's probably like the lap time is in that section, yep. and I think that speaks a lot to me about the trust and confidence in 350s because that thing's super fast. But I did not have the confidence to like get into it. Whereas this thing, I was like third, fourth, like clicking gears, you know? So I think it's just the comfortability. And it's the same point I always make is like, I love the 450 out there for what we rode. But if we were doing motos at Glen Helen and I was about to go out for my last moto at 1247, yeah. like, nah, bruh. Yeah. <laughs> like it, that starts getting scary yes. for me. So we call the KTM power, it's deceiving especially when you add a vortex, even though you're smoothing it and you're broadening all that power out, it's deceiving power. I've talked about this in other shows. When you come out of a corner, you think, man, I don't know if I could clear this double. And then you just give it a little bit of gas and then you overshoot it. And you're like, holy shit, man, I, where did that even come from? The muffler is quiet. The overall engine noise is very muffled compared to other Japanese bikes. So you never really feel like you're hauling ass but there's so much connection once you got an ECU mm. and some fuel and you got all that connection. So it can be deceiving. Hence the reason why I think you and I prefer the 350 size for most people, not even just for me, just for average guys hopping on because it's not deceiving power. Even though it's exciting, you could feel that, you know? 
this I don't think I can feel as much because I'm like it's so smooth. I will say that bike in third gear with the mapping, the throttle, like that bike, the way that it delivers power is so nice. Yeah. Like and and if you get it, you get like say from third to fourth, if you get the shift right, like you really don't feel that crazy vibration or like the chassis locking up. Like there's a way to ride that bike yeah. really really nice i just don't think i'm the guy to do it all day right. every day you know yeah and for me like i again if i'm not racing a lot i'm only racing a few times a year um the 350 is plenty for me now that i've raced it and kind of figured it out I, it, maybe i lack a little bit up hills but everywhere else i gain especially in the corners yeah um if i was racing a little bit more hardcore i think i would choose the 450 just because i want those starts yeah and with an ecu on a 450 you are able to run third gear and have that lug ability that we talk about yeah, that's so it was important. so nice yeah. honestly so that adds that power and shifts the power up so you're able to shift sooner yeah. and make it easier for you to ride yeah so there are those things that are inviting about a 450 um which i'm sure we'll talk about with our next guest um i would think he would prefer that but we'll see so we're packing it up 350 yeah. that's your choice yeah the church stays in session all right so you guys want to uh, join the church you know what to do i don't need to say anything Okay, so turn your volume down on your uh, laptops or your TV, whatever you're watching on YouTube. This man's about to talk, so it might scare you a little bit. Eddie Larratt, give your stats. Uh, 40 intermediate rider, it's about 6'2", 230 pounds. Okay, so you've had time on both before. You've had a 350 for a little while, you raced it, 450 for a little while, you raced it. Yep. So you're very familiar with the brand, with the bike, yep. and uh, you like both. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so we give each guy today 10 minute free practice on each bike to get warmed up. And then we get a two lap moto in timed for each bike to see what they're faster on, to see if that correlates to their thoughts. So I didn't tell these guys, Eddie included, what their lap times were until now. So the question is, what do you think you were faster on? Not what you like more, but what Three, you- 350. 350. Yeah. So he's right. So. He was a second faster on the 350 for fastest time, 147 versus a 148.5. So you can understand where is the 350 better for you? I think it's just that forgiveness that you know you you know you're not riding a bike with a monstrosity of power. So um, obviously being a bigger guy with this suspension set up for you, you know obviously you're a lot lighter than me, but your pro ability it, it gives you a a stiff suspension. So. I felt like I could push this bike a lot harder on this chassis, let's for say, but uh, the 350 brand, like breeds you to want to ride aggressive, right? Like you don't, you can't lug it in the corners, you can't be lazy, you can't roll up the jumps and just pop over it. Even though Chad and those guys have done a phenomenal job with this package, uh, FMF, but you still got to ride it. You know, it's, it's not a 450, but it's a lot more comfortable to ride aggressively than a 250F. So what do you have more fun riding? I mean, if you're, it just depends. Like, if you're ride, just going to ride with your buddies, I want to ride a 450 because it's lazy, right? You can just roll in and out of the I car. Want, I want the people to know out there, what would you prefer right now? If you had both of these bikes, you're going to go put that in your truck and you're going to go ride it for the whole year. You're going to yeah. race a couple races, just like what you do. Yeah. What would you want? I'm going to do a 450. And the reason? Just, just for the ease ability to ride it, you know? I mean, yeah, there's some tracks... You know that you don't 450s can get a little scary like we talked about earlier with the group of guys you know glenn helen at, at 12 o'clock in the afternoon dry just chewed up this is the game right here like you you're, you'd be a fool to not ride this bike but if you're racing in those conditions for glenn helen purposes for start and all that you're going to want to start you're going to want the 450 for the racing for the start now if you're riding longer duration motos 20 minute 25 minute motos then if you get a bad star you have time to make up you can ride this bike. I, I always get mixed in this conversation where people are like, oh, but the 350 is, is so much lighter. You can, you can ride it longer. 450, it just pulls on your arm so hard. And, and I'm, I've rode them both. I disagree with that. I'm gonna go against everybody and disagree with that because yes, that is a lot more power, but you don't ride it as hard as you ride this. This bike to, to feel the space you want to have, you really have to ride this motorcycle. The, the 350 invites you to ride it harder. Correct. Like when you ride it, I'm watching these guys ride as I'm doing the lap times. They just, they're on the throttle harder. They're on the throttle sooner. I'm, they're more aggressive. Hence the reason probably why you're faster on the 350. Correct. So 
for me, I'm a little bit like Eddie. I have to ride it harder. It forces me to ride harder, but I don't feel like I'm out of my comfort zone because mm -hmm. I'm pushing it. No, not at all. It invites me to ride it harder, yeah. but it's still safe. It's like, it's like jumping 50 feet off of a building into a bunch of pillows. You know it's safe. It's gnarly, but it's, yeah. you can jump as it's hard as you want. It's going to scare you, but <laughs> you'll, you'll still be good. Yeah, you'll be fine. So for me, and I'll just tell you what I prefer. I prefer riding the 350. If I had to go choose one night now, I just have more fun on the 350. I was faster on the 350 by two and a half seconds. Mm -hmm. um, same reason like Eddie brought up. I just think I can roll my corners better. I can move around the track better. I'm not as intimidated by the power. Sure, there was a couple things here today that I couldn't jump because I didn't have that grunt. Right. But I think for the vet world, you guys out there and you, you yep. already know what you're going to jump yeah. by the third or fourth lap that you're here. You're like, well, I think I can do that. I'm going to do that. And then you knock it yep. out. If you're 30, 40, 50 years old and you have to think about it all day to jump something, don't do it. Get out of there. D yeah, don't, so don't jump. There's plenty of power for you to jump anything safely on a 350. Yeah. And I think 450 can get you in trouble and give you a false sense of hope that you can do something and you're not even ready for it because right. your technique isn't there. Correct. So yeah, the power is not going to hold you back by any means. Right. It's all going to come down to uh, rider ability and technique at that point. So does this little test help you at all in direction of what you would do? Yeah, I mean, I just for what for where we ride the majority, where we race, what what you know what races I do, Mammoth Mountain and high elevation. I just think, I mean, yeah, a 350 for me would be awesome. Like almost to like have it as a training bike that you just ride Monday through Sunday. And then when you want to go race, you bring your you bring your steed out that's got the power for the start. So most tracks might not be an issue, you know. I mean, you raced this bike, you know, a, a, what a month and a half ago, and whole shot at a moto on it over 450s at Glen Helen where there's a super long straight. So it's just your technique. If your starting technique's sound and you're a good starter, you can you can get a start on this bike. So it's not it's not that. I just think I've been riding a lot of 450 lately, and and it's just I don't want to work this hard. <laughs> <laughs> I like to work that one. Real quick before we end this with you, um, that's score one for the 450s. Okay. Yep. Suspension wise, you're on stock stuff, obviously a heavier ride. Yep. Air fork, you can adjust it to what you want. You're on a factory A kit setup on this. Yep. You're still preferring the 450. Yeah, so the 450, because it's fairly new, um, I think we got almost five hours on it, so it's fairly new. Uh, the suspension is still really stiff. Like a lot of people that have bought KTMs or let's say the Austria brand, they'll learn that that suspension takes a little bit longer to break in because of the air cartridges and stuff. So that suspension wasn't bad. There's a couple things on the track that this performed better, like you would kind of jump into a flat spot. This was okay. Uh, I think the biggest problem I had with this suspension is that, you know, I'm 230 pounds, you're 170 pounds. So I was riding a little deeper in the strokes. I was in the harsh part. So a Kawea gets a lot of like chatter into the corners where this thing was like chattery and I'm like, whoa, like, is it gonna skate? Is it gonna hold? I mean, obviously Dunlop, you know, 34, it's got plenty of grip, it never went anywhere. But I think with this stuff set up on my weight on that chassis would definitely, I could move my lap around a little bit better, but I don't think you'll ever, in my case, I don't think I can ever beat the lap time on this versus that just because I know a half, like you said, it invites you to ride it more right. aggressively. All right, guys, retired 33 years from the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department, Greg Loop. He's been on a couple of these shows with me. He was my best man at my wedding. He's the longest standing friend of mine, so that says something. I have, no, I have nowhere else to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he is, uh, he's the owner of a YZ450. We have discussed many, many times in my living room about how I think he would enjoy smaller bikes. He refuses. So I told him to be open-minded in here. So he has, and he was. Um, okay, I'll start with this quick. Yes. Um, what do you think you were faster on? If I had to guess, the 350. Uh, and he was. So By overall, how much? 1.2 seconds, 211.2 on the 350, and 212.4 on the 450. Hmm. And just so you guys know, my fastest was a 136.2 versus a 138.4 on the 450. So almost three seconds, two point whatever. Yeah. I don't, I'm not a big math guy. Um, but nonetheless, faster on the 350, but let me guess, 
you would rather go with a 450. You damn right. <laughs> okay, so explain to the people why you enjoy a 450 power more than the 350. Okay, if it was gonna be solely used for moto, and that's all I did yep. was moto, I would probably go with the, begrudgingly, I would go with the 350. Okay. Um, you last longer on it. Uh, it's lighter feeling probably. One more time. Lighter feeling? Uh, yes, it does have a lighter feel because it doesn't have the torque of the 450. So it, believe it or not, it just it makes it feel lighter. Right. Um, more flickable, um, easier to ride, but. You're a lugger. I'm a lugger. Right. I'm a lugger, I'm not ashamed. I grew up CR 500s, KX 500s, still love them to this day. And I always learned to ride a gear high. Right. And uh, I'm the friend in the back yelling at him, tell him to downshift. And constantly, he he's a hater. And he won't do it. But so we leave him in third gear. He's happy there. We yeah, just leave yeah, him there. Yeah, third gear's it, he, it's heaven. He, he earned heaven. his time through his work. You know, he's enjoying himself on his 450. <laughs> so uh, I watched him. And as you guys know, you have friends that watch ride a long time. I think, and I, I don't care either way. I just think he looks more comfortable on 350. But I understand your reasons why you would want a bigger bike. You're 205 pounds. Yeah, 205. I've been on a couple extra since I retired. 60 years old. Yeah. 60, 205 pounds, but he doesn't get out much with me like he used to. He used to ride a lot with me, but you know, maybe he's twice a month with me or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I want to be more, but you know, family obligations, we all have crap, so. All right, so let's talk about the KTM brand. You love you some, some steel, steel frame. Steel frame, that's all I talk about, steel frame. I drive my man here nuts. Yeah. Uh, I'm old and I grew up on steel frames. I'm comfortable with a steel frame. Um, Compared to your Yamaha, what does the KTM it, do better than your bike? Corners. Yeah. Corners much better. better. And I love I love that old uh And he's 22. on a 22 YZ450, yeah. so that, the that, older that, chassis. And you helped me set it up. Yep. And and I, I love the old girl, the old blue girl. We call you, she's thick. Yep. I got skinny legs, so it's easy to grab onto. Yep. But um, yeah, the, 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 there's something about a steel frame and us old guys. We grew up on them, it brings back fond memories. Um, I, and, and I think just overall power feeling is a lot easier to manage, wouldn't it be? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's because it's more forgiving yeah. with the aluminum. It's going to be. I, I don't. I, you know, I have my opinions. I'm no engineer. Yeah. But I believe the aluminum uh, makes it more rigid. Yeah. It really does. And, and, and the, the delivery, especially with the new chassis, it is a little bit more rigid. But I do have a lot of traction. But overall, I just think the engine itself is a lot smoother than on a Yamaha YZ450. I'd have to agree. Yeah. I'd have to agree. So how I set this bike up on the 450 side with the Vortex ECU is um, the stock one is very abrupt off throttle mm -hmm. and uh, then it just kind of signs off a little bit early for me. So I wanted to bring a little bit more connection to the 450 and broaden all that out. And this is what uh, XPR did to this engine, man. It's so fun to ride. Um, third gear lug, if you want to lug in third gear and you're a third gear lugger, I watched you all day today. You can look at the video. You were in third yep. gear pretty much the whole track. Uh, yeah. You downshifted all day? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> a couple of times I did. I was getting after it. All right. But as I started getting tired, yeah. hello clutch, yeah. hello third gear. Yeah. They're my friend. Um, suspension wise, obviously 205 pounds. Did you prefer yeah. one or the other? Um, I actually like the suspension on the 350. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, so a little bit I, stiffer, I think. Yeah. Um, air fork, I know Jace was talking about, he mentioned a little bit of pitching coming on and off throttle. There's less of that for me on the 350, mm -hmm. so I would assume that's the direction for you as yeah, well. Yeah, it, it felt more stable as a platform yeah. coming in. It was none of that divey, you know, quirky stuff. Yep. You know, and with my weight, I mean, I can, <laughs> can kind of crush some stuff, so. Now, if you went and bought a KTM 450, which we're gonna have to talk to your wife about, Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> it takes two of us to take down the redhead. Now, if she said you can have a KTM 450, but you have to keep your air fork on for a year, are you okay with that? You're, and you rode this today. I would divorce her. Okay. So we need a. You need a spring fork. I need a spring fork. Okay. I'm a spring fork guy. I love steel frames. I, I may. I'm old, and I'm not necessarily set in my ways. Yeah. I. The comfort level is there. I trust it. So you just need more hold up and a yes. better front end feel. Yes, yes. Absolutely. absolutely. So that's kind of what I've been complaining about for years is it, it, it works well, it just never get that tire contact feel as you do with the spring fork. 
It does it. feel a little bit heavier in the front, and maybe that is one of the reasons why when you go in a corner, you have more weight transfer a little bit, and there's more tire contact batch with the spring fork, because you're adding maybe um, a pound and a half of weight with the spring fork inside. See, and you're, you're talking to a guy that could fill a dry pee between his mattress and box spring. <laughs> I mean, come on. I that's, just, a, that's a blessing and a curse at the same time. <laughs> I just, I, you know, like I said, I, I, I grew up on certain bikes. Yeah, you grew bikes. up with certain things and, yes. and older guys such as yeah. yourself. You We're like, comfortable you know what with it. You like. And you trust it. Right. You learn to trust it over the years. Um, so, yeah, the steel frame, spring fork, I'm down. All right. I'm good. So that's one for the 450. So we're, we're split two to two. Two guys on 350. Two guys would prefer a 450. Oh, really? So Eddie and you. I didn't know that. Eddie and you go to 450, and we Big didn't have Ed. Greg watch these before we recorded them. So I didn't know. So uh, now God. we need a tire breaker. So we're gonna have to go out to the local tracks of Southern California. Oh boy. So if you see me out with two bikes and you want to ride them, hey, say, hey, Chris, I'm not a weirdo. I'm not gonna sue you. I would love to ride a 350 <laughs> or a 450. You can come uh, meet me at the local Southern California uh, tracks. But nonetheless, really fun day today. Uh, we got to break these bikes down. Hopefully this kind of helped you, who you are, what type of rider. That's the main thing here is you got to figure out what type of rider you are, what you're riding, and what you're comfortable with. Um, KTM does a great job of giving you different motorcycles and, uh, options. To, and options to have fun on. Yes. So for me, I like to have fun, but yet be safe and be able to go home, go to work the next day. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, the 350 does that. For Greg... He's only doing three laps of Fury anyway, so the 450 <laughs> is going to be his choice. Yeah. And then it's off the trail riding, boys. And yes, then we're going trail <laughs> riding. Yeah, so. it was a big smile on your face. That's right. So uh, if you have any questions, Chris at KieferInkTesting.com is my email. I'm happy to answer them for you. Our door is open as usual. And don't forget, we'll do some more videos like these over on RacerXOnline.com. Hopefully have some fun and uh, talk some trash and mm -hmm. uh, maybe hopefully help you uh, in the right direction for your purchasing decision. Um, we'll see you on the next test. Don't forget, 12 issues, $30. Racer X Magazine. You still read magazines? Oh, yeah. He's old. He reads Yeah, magazines. dude, I, you keep your computer screen. I don't need that shit. Yeah. I want something I can feel and touch. There you go. You know? Magazine guy. 30 bucks, 12 issues. Get yourself a free little yep. gift when you do it. And we'll see you on the next video. See y'all.